Welcome, dear friends, to Kardec Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with the laws of love. This book that gives us new hope, that gives us a new meaning to life, a new understanding about ourselves, about God, about our relationships. Why do we reincarnate? To master relationships. And we often don't know. Because the school of life is the real school. And we're learning. We're learning. We're learning especially in this chapter. that talks about difficult topics. Suicide. Abortion. Divorce. Today, Emmanuel is going to illuminate our minds. And hopefully, we'll feel the scripture. When he's going to tell us more about marriage, unhappy marriages, and divorce. Are you ready, friends? Spiritism doesn't prohibit anything, doesn't condemn anything. It just explains. And that's how it is. Are you ready? Let us then come together to feel the consolation. And more than feeling the consolation, let us feel the very presence of our Christ Jesus, illuminating our hearts, our minds, so we can look back at our decisions and bless them. Even if we disagree, are repentant, we bless because they made us grow. Recently watching an episode in Waffles and Mochi, it's very cute, but very interesting for children, but also for families in general. There's an episode that Chef Massimo, who is an Italian chef, very wise, he's telling the characters in the program how he learned from his mistakes, even making a wonderful recipe, a dish that became renowned in his business so here we are that's the attitude for us as we enter this topic that is very very important so we're going to go to the book laws of love chapter four and here it comes we studied a little bit yesterday about difficulties at home in relationships and there is question number one in this chapter that we haven't discussed yet in which Emmanuel was asked, we understand that many marriages result in unhappy unions and sometimes very antagonistic, inducing the spouses to divorce. How do we interpret the phase that they experience of reciprocal attraction full joy and hope when they were dating and when they were engaged. So isn't that puzzling? How come? You thought you were happy, you were for one another, and then you got married, and later you no longer are on the same page. What happens? Emmanuel explains. But let's listen. This is the answer from on high. Any person who aspires for an elevated title goes through a phase of enchantment. The teacher thinks about the ascension to his full position. Once he gets the certificate, it's imperative that he dedicates himself to incessant study to attend to the demands of professorship. The professor makes effort to conquer the certificate that will give him freedom for his profession. And once he gets the distinction 
he's gonna be asked to work without stop in a way to sustain the responsibility that he wants to to live with and the same is with marriage period and then we're like uh did i miss anything vanessa no you didn't emmanuel here is like jesus talking parables actually he's talking in an analogy he's saying it requires effort yes it's like when we are teens or children I wish I could be an astronaut. Are you sure you want to do that? There's a pathway. Oh, I want to be a Navy SEAL. It's one of the most difficult trainings that we have in the United States. Oh, I want to be a physician. But it's going to require a lot of training, a lot of studying, a lot of work. Marriage is like the Navy SEALs. It requires effort and effort and effort and effort endurance resilience persistence determination so Emmanuel is telling us that when we allow our relationships to turn into antagonic relationship it's because we're not cultivating that relationship do you feel guilty? Don't feel guilty. Let us learn from it. Relationships are like a garden we need to cultivate. Well, Vanessa, I do my share and the other person doesn't do it. But remember yesterday, the faulty husband is someone whom in a previous life we pushed to cruelty and lies. But my wife is crazy. Yeah, the unbalanced wife, he said, in a previous life, was somebody whom we abandoned to her needs and addictions. But my children, they, they destroy my marriage. The problem children are those spirits that we harmed in the past, that we poisoned their feelings, and disfigure their character. It's not enough, right? You want more. Me too. Emilio has more. How do we face divorce in the superior planes, planes of the spirit? From an immortal perspective, how should we view the divorce? Divorce sometimes is needed, but it's not a saving pathway when struggles are grave. No one harvests flowers by sowing stones. Only time can dissipate the shadows that we accumulate over time. Only unconditional forgiveness erases offenses and only the good extinguishes evil. So divorce is not the solution, though sometimes it's needed. So he agrees sometimes it's needed. Does Spiritism prohibit it? No, go to the Gospel according to Spiritism. But it explains. It explains. I know you want more. We'll bring a few more questions and then we're going to stop to chew upon it. He was asked, there are cases in which it's almost impossible to stay together. Isn't divorce a lesser evil to avoid greater evils? Emmanuel replies, many people say that divorce is a pathway through which we avoid crime and we are not going to 
contest it. We're not going to say anything against it. These are his words. There are cases in which it works. So we avoid greater evils. And he gives another analogy. It's like amputating a member to avoid death. But we are always postponing the that for some time in the future. We're going to talk about what this means. But then the person was not satisfied and continued with two more questions. But as the struggles happen in a marriage, is it best to remain into the marriage? Answer. To pay is to be free. To learn is to assimilate the lesson. What does he mean? He's saying, we do not encounter one another by chance. Joana of Cusa, her husband was Cusa, and he was an important person in the Roman Empire. Joanna knew she, Jesus and was a disciple in her own way. There was a moment, and it's described in the book, Good News, by Humberto de Campos. She says, she says, Master, it's very hard to be in this marriage. He doesn't understand me. He's cruel. He's this, that, and the other. But Jesus says, stay strong. Make sure that you stay strong. Be faithful. Be loyal. But I want to follow you. Follow me by being the best you can be right now at home. He did, and she obeyed. It didn't take much longer when her husband died. And then she had a hard life. But she continued following Jesus. Does it mean we cannot divorce? No, we can. Is it a crime? No, it's not a crime. It's not a crime. But... Many people divorce without efforts, without really putting an effort to change, to understand, to forgive. Who teaches forgiveness, right? It's very hard. Unconditional forgiveness that erases offenses. So you and I are being asked to meditate on this lesson, but it's not over. We have one more. What are the worst consequences of unhappy relationships beyond those that present to us sufferings, frustrations, Evolving lesions, em emotional lesions, sorry. What are the worst consequences of those unhappy relationships? What is Emmanuel going to reply? He says, we are forced to observe that uncontrolled sexual affection appears brings a multitude of calamities for the life of the spirit. Amongst them, we're going to highlight, he says, fascination and hatred in the problems of obsession, suicide, and abortion as being the worst, the most lamentable ones. So friends, here we have 
we're going to stop and go back to all the questions we've read. Because it's a lot of food for thought. Emilio does not answer in a linear way. He does not answer in a conventional way. He does not prohibit. Of course, he's not the ruler. He's just explaining the laws of love. So first of all, we know no relationship is by chance. We know, he's saying here, that a relationship requires care, requires effort, requires renunciation. And what is renunciation? It's the renouncing of the ego. That doesn't mean, like many people say, oh, you need to renounce, forget about yourself. And no, no, no. We're talking about renouncing hatred, renouncing grudges, forgiving. In a, in a marriage, as he says here, in a family, we purify our impulses. We renew our decisions. So when you see somebody getting married, remind them, this is a school. Are you ready? Of course, they are enchanted in love, etc. But we need not to forget that on earth, we're still living trials and atonements. And it's a pathway through which we will need often to forgive ourselves, forgive the other person. Divorce doesn't solve the problem. Sometimes it's needed, he says. But we need to ponder. There are people who barely have problems they quit. There are people who don't pay attention to the needs of the partner. And then when divorce happens, they cry like a baby. They go, oh, they abandoned me. What have we done for the person to go away? And if we haven't done anything, as we often say to people, love yourself more. Divorce sometimes is easy, but majority of times it's living hell. Because we see many people who suffer and the people who battle against each other. But when we have children, we have to be extra careful. Because we need to make sure of the impact on the children. Oh, Vanessa, but the guy or the girl did this, that, and the other. We understand. I know people who get divorced and they blame on the person who took a decision to divorce, saying, and even spiritists say that. They say, you are going to regret it because you are making a bad decision. We're not supposed to. Law of freedom. If somebody wants to go away, it's not on us to keep them in. Look at Jesus, our guiding model. When Judas decided to take a different route, he didn't block Judas from it. Law of freedom. And we can't blackmail the person emotionally either. And if the person decides to go away and if you really love her, you wait. You don't jump into the next relationship because then you're proving that you really pushed the person out. Right? So now we're saying this because I know of several cases and you know of several cases and it's very common then when it comes to divorce, guilt is just around the corner. But by feeling guilty, we're not happy. We're not helping ourselves or other people. We need 
first and foremost, to prevent. So we need to prepare ourselves better for marriage. That's a sure thing. Chico Xavier used to say that. But we need support from society. And nowadays our society is still not very supportive because we push people to extremes in which they cannot keep up the pace of a healthy relationship because of the demands of daily life. So friends, Emmanuel is reminding us that it's a no-no to quit easily. No. We need to make sure that we make efforts. If it's inevitable, let us bless. Because nobody stays married for immortality. The goal is to reconcile with this person. To be grateful to that scenario, to that experience, and bless. So you and I in the next 24 hours, if you are married, bless your marriage. Let's spend the next 24 hours saying this. I bless this marriage in the name of God. Repeat it. I bless this marriage in the name of God. I bless this marriage in the name of God. And if you have divorced, bless the relationship that passed. But Vanessa, I still feel... So let us pacify. Let us make amends inside of us and say, I bless that relationship. It made me grow. I am stronger today than yesterday. And I know we're all destined to be brothers and sisters in God. And one day, in the timeline of life, everything will be fine. We're saying this not to minimize it, but to work around unneeded guilt. Because guilt doesn't happen, doesn't help us. Read the chapter on guilt in the book Thought and Life by Emmanuel. We need to overcome it. And the best way to do it is to humble ourselves. Like Saul of Tarsus, the Paul, Paul the Apostle, he humbled himself before his mistakes. Let us humble ourselves and bless the marriages. Bless the relationships we've had. And make peace within ourselves, knowing that in the timeline of life, Sooner or later, everything will be all right. Blessing our relationships, cultivating, forgiving, and at the same time, humbling ourselves before the designs of God. This is it for today. Tomorrow we'll be back for more in Laws of Love. We wish you a lot of reflection and a lot of blessings as we continue to be tuned at Cardiac Radio, where we're always nourishing our souls. Thank you, friends.